All right, Dylan, thank you for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions. We'll take your first questions uh, from Andrew Wells. Andrew Hale? Hi, Dylan. Um, how old were you when you started playing football, and how would you describe your athletic journey now that you've made it to the national championship game? Um, I started football when I was, like, seven years old. Um, ever since then, you know, I was always, like, the best player on the field. Um, I played running back and linebacker growing up. So, uh, you know, it was fun for me growing up, and it's fun for me now. You know, so, like, being able to play on this big stage now is a dream come true. You know, when I was a kid, I used to always turn on college game day um, every Saturday. You know, the first thing I'd do is wake up and watch that. So being able to play, you know, in the national championship, like I said, is a dream, dream of mine. All right, we'll next go to Patrick Murphy. Patrick, go ahead. Dylan, when you look at the, the way this Ohio State rushing attack has changed throughout the year, um, not only Trey Sermon, but the offensive line, what, what do you see that, that they've gotten better at, and what are the biggest challenges of, of this attack on Monday? Uh, first and foremost, I think that uh, Ohio State has a really great offensive line. You know, they open up the holes, you know, for the running back Trey Sermon to get through them. And I feel like that's why he's had, you know, majority of success, you know, because of his offensive line. And I feel like, you know, every great running back will say that about, you know, the guys up front. But um, as far as, like, for us, you know, I feel like that's one of the main things we have to uh, worry about is, you know, trying to make Ohio State one-dimensional and uh, stopping their uh, run game because, you know, that's, a, you know, something that's really important in just as far as the success. Right, next we'll go to Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Dylan, you, you opened up recently about some of the difficulties um, you, know, you faced in 2020, both from a family standpoint and a football standpoint. Just how much will that weigh into any decision that you might have about potentially taking advantage of extra eligibility um, for college? Uh, as of right now, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to focus on, you know, the, you know, championship game. I'm not really worried about anything afterwards. Uh, I'm just going to take it one day at a time, you know, after the, uh, you know, game is over with and whatever happens, happens. All right, next we'll go to Tony Salakis. Go ahead, Tony. Dylan, uh, how, how much pain were you in this season? And, and when did, when, if ever, did you get back to 100%? And then my second question is just, um, from, from your recruiting standpoint, uh, from the time when you were recruiting, what have you done to kind of block out some uh, of the criticism that you've received online? Um, just as far as, you know, going through, like, throughout pain and stuff throughout the year, like, my the first time I felt like 100% on myself was the very first game of the season against Missouri. And then um, after that, you know, just all throughout the season, you know, it was just, you know, constant, like, pain and all that. But like I said, it was something I had to persevere through. Um, I never had to go through a whole season, you know, feeling like that. It was new for me. Um, but at the same time, it was like it wasn't nothing I couldn't play through. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm, re I'm really tough when it comes to, you know, dealing with a lot of pain and all that. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to be there for my teammates, you know, make a difference and, you know, be able to make the calls for them. All right, next we'll go to John Zener. Go ahead, John. Hey, Dylan, thanks for talking to us. Um, what led you to kind of open up and let people know what you're going through? And and secondly, has that all that stuff missing last season, has that made being here just even that even that much more special? Oh, yeah, of course. It made it that much more special. And uh, like I said, at the end of the day, I just really wanted to be there for my teammates. And uh, like like I said, for that post that I made, it wasn't for me or for anybody to feel like any like sympathy towards me. Like that was really for those people out there that was going through the same thing. That I was going through and thinking about giving up and just showing that, you know, we're human. Like everyone, you know, who plays football or, prof or a professional sport or a, co a collegiate sport, you know, we're all human. We go through the same thing. So me putting that out there, that was for, you know, other kids or other athletes that are going through what I'm going through and showing that they, they, they can make it through. And next we'll go to Steve Moulton. Steve. Hey, Dylan, hope you're doing well today. Uh, I, I can't help but want to ask your impressions of what you've seen uh, out of uh, Justin Fields and uh, really uh, the offensive line in particular as well there at Ohio State. Uh, I've been watching Justin Fields, you know, since he uh, came, out of, came out of high school. You know, I always had high praise in him. He kind of reminded me of uh, a young Cam Newton or something like that. 
But dude, you know, he has a lot of great talent. You know, he could deliver the ball to his receivers, has a strong arm, athletic. You know, he's everything that you want in a quarterback. And um, like I said, we respect him. And uh, like I said, we go into the game, you know, confident and knowing that this is going to be a great challenge. Next, we'll go to Ben Hall. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, Dylan. Um, you know, throughout this year, we've seen uh, some, some younger guys step up on your defense like Malachi Moore and Will Anderson. Um, what has it been like serving kind of as a role model and a leader to some of the younger guys on this defense? Uh, it means a lot to me, man. Like, because I remember when I was a freshman and I needed that guidance or needed like an older guy just to give me that extra nudge, just to have confidence in order to go on the field. And just knowing that someone older believes in you and knows that, you know, your athletic ability is good enough to be in this defense and play, you know, it means a lot. So I try and, you know, stick my uh, neck out a lot for the guys. Um, and uh, like, as far as like, you know, just the freshmen in general, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, just in general like that. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. But um, yeah, just as far as like the freshmen and stuff, we try and, you know, keep them, you know, grounded and knowing that, you know, that you can be successful playing in this defense. Thank you. The next we'll go to Zachary Brasilia. Zach? Dylan, what, you know, how would you just describe the last two years? You know, I mean, you obviously missed all of last season and this year you talked about you know, how tough this year was losing your grandmother and, you know, the pain you've played through, but now you're at this point. Just what, what has this been? What have the last two years of your life been like? Uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs, but at the same time, you know, as life, you know, everything's not going to be picture perfect, you know, but, you know, it's blessings within, you know, everything, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I'm grateful to be in this position with my teammates. And this was something, you know, I was looking forward to, you know, knowing, you know, I would come back and all of that, you know, so, um, being here and being able to be a part of, part of this historic team, you know, it means a lot to me. Next question comes from Haley Sutton. Go ahead, Haley. Hey, I'm um, just kind of touching on a question that was kind of already asked, but Coach Saban mentioned that whenever you step on the field, you kind of give the rest of the team around you some electricity. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that your coach thinks so highly of you, does that – give you any more motivation to play or does it help you kind of stay grounded when you're out on the field? Oh yeah, it helps me a lot. You know, like I said, with Coach Saban having those, you know, feelings about me, you know, it it's a great feeling because like I said, I've been knowing him since I was in the eighth grade and uh, he recruited me out of middle school. So for me, for me and his relationship, it's like, you know, kind of like a great uncle or something like that, you know, so for him to feel like that about me, it means a lot. And uh, me knowing that about myself, you know, I can affect the guys around me. It makes me feel even, you know, better and more motivated to even go out there, you know, just have my presence around there, you know. So for me to be like that for my teammates, you know, like I said, it's a blessing. And our next question comes from Pranav Rama. Go ahead. Hey, Dylan, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I was just wondering in terms of overall big picture, anything changing pre preparation wise to limit Ohio State's rushing and passing attack? Uh, no, nah, we're just um, breaking down, you know, their offense, just like we would do any other offense. You know, we're not trying to change anything or, you know, um, try and do, th do anything out of the ordin ordinary, you know. So for us, it's just, you know, because like at the same time, uh, I think my defensive coordinator may have mentioned it, you know, a lot of teams do a lot of copycats, you know, from other teams that we've played previously or things that may have worked on us before. So we try and stay, you know, ahead or prepared. In, um, in that category. So, you know, we're just trying to be ready for the game. Take one final question from Chris Hummer. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Dylan, um, how do you think your 2017 class would view itself differently if it helps win a second national championship? Uh, oh, man, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. But like I said, I feel like our class is one of the best ones. Um, you know, we had a lot of talent in that class, you know, just a lot of guys that you see now that's, you know, in the league and guys now that's leaders on this team. You know, we've uh, carried a lot of weight and um, I'm proud of the guys that's, that was in this class. And um, I'm just happy to say I was, uh, you know, I'm a part of it, you know, because like I said, it was a lot of great talent, um, a lot of great people, players and everything, you know, so I'm just proud to be able to be a, a part of it. Dylan, thank you for your time this morning. Good luck on Monday. No problem. Thank you. 
All right, we'll continue on. Uh, next, we'll be joined by Patrick Sertan. Uh, again, if you have a question, use the raise hand function in the chat and uh, let us know that you have a question and we'll continue on with Patrick. Patrick, welcome. Uh, we'll go ahead and go straight to questions and uh, we'll start with Sam Kahn. Go ahead, Sam. Hi, Patrick. I'm curious, when you look at the way you guys have played on defenses of late, what has gone well and where have you guys gotten better the most, in your opinion? Um, we learned through experience what we need to do. Um, you know, I just felt like we prepared better each and every week. Uh, we've gotten better each and every week flying around to the ball, uh, making adjustments and, you know, learning from past games where we struggled at and sort of fixed and corrected what we needed to do. All right, our next uh, question comes from Stephen Smith. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Pat, I know um, um, Malachi Moore didn't play against Notre Dame, but how has he looked this week in practice? Uh, he looked he look fine. Um, he's moving out there. Uh, he should be ready to go. All right, we'll next go to Patrick Murphy. Patrick? Patrick, uh, just your impressions of, of Justin Fields, what you've seen of him, kind of the, the growth of him as a quarterback, um, and, and obviously coming off the best game of his career, what you guys have to do to slow that passing attack down. Um, obviously, he's a great talent. He's got a tremendous arm. Um, like I said, he's a leader on that team. Uh, whatever he does affects the team a lot. Um, but we just got to look at uh, things to do to affect them, you know, as far as getting to the quarterback, pressuring him, um, different disguises in the back end, many different uh, things to look at through the um, uh, film room. All right, our next question will come from Mark Stallworth. Go ahead, Mark. Hello, Patrick. How you doing? Uh, my name is Mark Stallworth. I'm with the Miami Times newspaper. My question to you is how important is a game like this for you all in regards to recruiting in South Florida? Um, you know, it's, it's still an important game. Um, I don't know what recruiting got to do with it. Um, but at the same time, you know, we just focus on this game. Um, hopefully, you know, they'll look at this game and see um, what they think of it. But um, right now, I don't think that's, uh, that's out of the question, out of the picture right now. I also had a follow-up, if that's okay. All right. What what are you looking forward to uh, towards the most this week coming back to uh, South Florida playing in Hard Rock Stadium? Um, like I said before, I know it'll be a um, a hometown game. Um, I'm just looking forward to uh, play the best game with my teammates and just going out there and um, you know just winning the game. That's all all I'm focused on really. All right. Our next question will come from Nathan Baird. Nathan, go ahead. Hey, Patrick, um, the combination of Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson for Ohio State, are there any teams that you guys have already faced that you feel like you, you've seen a, a mix of this where you have two receivers of that caliber uh, between the slot and the outside that you have to deal with at the same time? And, and how do you try to match up with that? Um, I, I say we've seen teams like that before. Um, just this team, you know, they got, they're very talented on both sides of the ball, even in the running game. Um, you know, so I feel like uh, they bring a whole lot of dimension on their offense. Um, they're great receivers, of course, um, which brings a um, tremendous amount of uh, depth in their offense. So, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. Our next question comes from Leo Johnson. Leo, go ahead, please. You know, overall, how do you look to stop this Ohio State passing game that they all they have great receivers and then they can also attack with their tight ends um like i said it all starts in the film room and preparing each and every day in practice but i'm also looking at the top concepts what they like to do um things like that you know as a whole defense and as a whole unit is all about studying their tendencies and you know just preparing each and every day for the game all right, our next question comes from Christopher Heidel. Go ahead, Christopher. Hey, Patrick, thanks for taking my call. Um, 
talk about your father. Your father played in the NFL you know, with the Dolphins and the Chiefs. What did he teach you uh, about football growing up? And also, what was it like going, like you said, going back home to Miami, where he was literally uh, there for a long time when you were growing up? Uh, I could remember him playing uh, since I was in my earliest youth days. But um, he's he's taught me a lot about football, um, even more about football, you know, uh, after life of football. You know, he taught me a lot of things going into the game. And, you know, I just carried and learned from him. And uh, just going back home, you know, he's going to be there. Um, I'm just looking forward to impress him, you know. Um, I know they're going to be happy to see me. I'm going to be happy to see them. So um, it's going to be a great moment. And our next question will come from Mitch Stacy. Go ahead, Mitch. Hey, Patrick. I, you already talked about the uh, Ohio State receivers uh, a little bit. Uh, you're probably going to be seeing a lot of Chris Olave. Can you talk a little bit about what he does so well and why he's hard to defend? Um, I say his speed. Um, he creates separation fast um, at the top of his routes. Um, and I say he also is very patient and fluid with his route running. Um, he keeps the defense guessing. I say that by the much, but um, yeah, he's an excellent vertical threat for their team. And uh, it's going to be a challenge, of course. All right, our next question comes from Stephen Means. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Patrick, kind of along those same lines, as a corner, I, I, every wide receiver is different. They have their own special skill sets. But as a corner, when you know a guy that you're maybe matched up against on a specific snap is more of a deep threat than he is maybe yards after the catch or intermediate routes, is there any adjustments you make as a corner when you know that in the back of your head? Um, of course, you got to look at certain things where receivers like to do their tendencies and how they utilize them in the offense. So, um. You know, as a corner, you got to expect that going into the game, um, his favorite routes, what he likes to do here and there. So um, you got to be on top of that as a corner. All right. We'll go now to David Ferronis. David, go ahead. Hey, Pat. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you do doing so well since your time at Heritage. Um, along the lines of, uh, you know, playing back home in South Florida and, and, and also your father, um, you, you talked about having memories uh, from being a child uh, going to the stadium. What, what memories were there? You know, are there any specific ones? And, and also uh, from uh, that first uh, playoff semifinal that you played as a freshman, uh, what can you remember from that? And what would it mean to you to potentially go out on top in the stadium that your father once called uh, his NFL home? Um, well, I'll say that I remember, you know, certain things when he was playing for Miami, like him making plays. Um, they also had a great defense back then with him, Jason Taylor, Sam Madison, um, all those guys, Zach Thomas. But um, I just remember him making plays out there having fun. Um, but also just knowing that what it took to get here, you know, it's a blessing, honestly. But, um, you know, just looking forward to this game. I remember the semifinal game. Um, I just remember being a freshman out there. Um, you know, having fun, you know, just winning the Orange Bowl. You know, I just look forward to the game ahead. All right, our next question will come from Jeff Spiegel. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi, Pat. Obviously, uh, you, you mentioned your dad and what, what a great career he had. And uh, you're up for a couple of awards tonight. Um, how much would it mean to you to to win those awards to further show the mark that you yourself have had on this game? Um, I'll be honest, honestly. Um, but like I said before, um, I'm not so much focused on the awards. I'm just focused on the game ahead. Um, you know, the awards come second um, towards what we got in the store and what we got to uh, finish. All right, we'll take one final question from Myron Williams. Myron, go ahead. Patrick, I know you spoke a little bit about your time here in South Florida. Um, have you had a chance to speak to the other guys from South Florida, Jordan Battle, uh, Josh Job? Um, what are some of the excitement that you guys have as a unit and as a team coming back? Um, we're all very excited coming back home and playing uh, in the national championship. Um, you know, all our families are going to be there. They're going to be excited, you know, uh, repping the hometown. You know, it's an exciting feeling knowing that um, how much tradition you brought into the uh, South Florida world. Uh, we did, but, um, you know, it's going to be a exciting moment and we're going to uh, have fun out there. So, you know, we're just going to enjoy the moment. 
Pat, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on Monday in Miami. We're now joined by defensive lineman Phil Mathis. If you have a question, use the raise the hand function and we'll get to questions. Uh, we'll start with Stephen Smith. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Phil. I mean, Coach Saban has had a lot of great teams come to the program, but he mentioned after the SEC title that he loves this team. Uh, what is it about this team that sort of grabbed his heart? Uh, I really just think the way we, you know, the way we have discipline around here. Uh, we all work together. Um, we we try to do everything right. Everybody stayed out of trouble. Um, we try to um, follow the protocols of co coronavirus, and we handle that well. So I can say that's probably one of the reasons. All right, our next question comes from Dennis Dodd. Go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, hey, Phil. Um, give us a general feel on how you stop uh, – Justin Fields. Uh, I can't hear you. Can you repeat that? Oh, uh, give us an idea of how you guys plan to stop Justin Fields. How do you get your hands on him? Uh, just do what we've been doing all week, all week and week out long. Uh, just getting, just trying to get back there and do our job. Um, just run a calls that coach call from the sideline and just try to go out there and dominate them. All right. Our next question will come from Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Bill, how much? You muted yourself there, Mike. Go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me now? We can. Go ahead. Okay, my apologies for that. How much has Nick Saban talked about the, the 2009 team and uh, that team going undefeated and uh, the chance for this team to go undefeated as well? Uh, he really haven't been talking about it much because uh, we, we just been focused on, you know, what we got to do now. You know, that's in the past, and we're here now. We just focus on what, what we got to do now to bring on, a, bring on a dub. All right, our next question will come from Chris Hummer. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, um, Phil, what would a second national championship do for the legacy of your 2017 class? Uh, I think it'll bring a lot of spark uh, for the team that's coming back um, next year. Uh, it'll be a lot of motivation. And just for the uh, 17 class, it'll bring a lot of, I don't know, I guess love, a good feeling that we did it two times, uh, especially with the guys that was there freshman year. Also with Smitty catching that big catch. And, uh, and obviously what, whatever we go out there and do come Monday. All right, our next question comes from Dan Hope. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Phil, just what's it like watching Ohio State's offensive line on film? What kind of challenges do you see that they're going to present to you guys? Uh, those those guys are um, pretty physical. Uh, they move pretty good. Uh, and we just got to uh, accept the challenge up front and uh, and just try to dominate all, all night. All right, Angel Wells will be our next question. Go ahead, Angel. Hi, Phil. Who or what is something in your life that motivates you on a daily basis as a student athlete? Um, I could say uh, my father, man. He's always um, in my ear, you know, even when I, you know, play good or play bad. Um, he's always motivating me, telling me that I, I got it and I can, I can do it. Just keep pushing. Uh, also, my mom, you know, she's always, always texting me. Also, even though she can't be here because of, you know, coronavirus and stuff like that, and she always letting me know that, you know, she loves me and I can do whatever I put my mind into. It. Next question will come from Stephen Means. Go ahead, Stephen. If hey, when you guys are watching film on Trace Sermon, I don't know how far back you guys go, but. Uh, have you ever, I guess, kind of caught yourself wondering what the heck happened with this guy between maybe the first three or four games to, you know, what you guys may be preparing to see in the college football playoff now? Uh, can you repeat that? 
I guess what I'm asking is, is it, uh, f- from your standpoint as a defensive lineman who's gone up against some pretty good running backs, have you seen maybe a difference in, you know, the Trey Sermon that you've seen on film from maybe the first two or three games of the season to maybe the film from the last two or three games where it seems like you know, he's running 200 plus yards every night? Oh yeah, he's a good back. Um, he run he runs pretty hard. Uh, you can see that it mean it means a lot to him. Um, he's he got something to prove, and that's something I love about him. But obviously, we got to go out and just do our job and wrap them up. All right, we'll go to Nathan Baird. Go ahead, Nathan. Another question about the Ohio State offensive line. Just their, their two tackles uh, are not the guys who have maybe gotten national accolades and things like that. But what are you seeing from, from them, especially, that makes them a tough matchup for, for someone coming off the edge? I mean, they they do a good, great job in the um, passing game, uh, also in the running game uh, for Trey. Uh, and like I said before, we just got to take on the challenge and um, show up with the same intensity that they bring. All right, our next question will come from Leo Johnson. Leo? Overall, how do you plan to get past the Buckeyes' outstanding offensive line headlined by Wyatt Davis and put pressure on Justin Fields and Trey Sermon? Uh, I just say don't change nothing that we have been doing all year long. Uh, just stick to the plan. Uh, take what Coach gives us from the sideline and go out there and execute the call. Next question comes from Brendan Gulick. Go ahead, Brendan. Hi, Phil. Thanks for meeting with us. When you uh, look at this Ohio State team on tape, whether it's personnel or scheme or talent, you know, do they do they remind you of anybody you've played this year, whether it was in conference or, or even the Notre Dame game? Any any similarities you see? Um, not really. I mean, when I watch film, I, I see I see that team, you know, they do what they do. They do what they do best. And I, don't, I can't compare nobody to those guys, you know, because that's their team. And uh, I feel like it would be disrespect if I tried to compare them to some, someone else. Uh, you know, Ohio State is Ohio State, and they do a good job of what they do. And if I could just follow up on that real quick, um, even if you're not going to compare, you know, players or teams to each other, from a scheme perspective, what, what you see the offense do for Ohio State, have you – do you feel like you've seen that style of offense in other games where maybe, you know, you guys as a defense feel like, okay, this isn't totally new to us? Oh, most definitely. They, uh, on the offensive line, they try to get sideline to sideline like Notre Dame. So I think that'll be something I can compare. All right, our next question comes from Steve Moulton. Go ahead, Steve. Hey Phil, hope you're doing well today. Uh, I can't help but uh, ask about you. Where do you th- where do you think you feel like you've grown the most this year as a football player, and where do you think you can improve uh, the most moving forward? Uh, the most I think I've grown is just just having confidence in myself, and also just becoming a leader on the team, and uh, and just being the best that I can be uh, whenever I'm out on the field, and just taking away that nervous nervousness from what I had last year and just being the best that I can be. <laughs> uh, on the subject of being a leader, though, is it more uh, by your actions or are you a vocal leader on this team? Uh, I try to lead by my actions, just, just by doing the right things on and off the field, um, just showing the uh, young guys that you don't have to be a, a tough guy uh, or anything to do the right things around here. It doesn't take that much. Uh, all it takes is just buying in to the team and, you know, just staying focused. All right. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate your time this morning. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll next be joined uh, by defensive lineman DJ Dale. Again, your hands have been lowered. If you have questions, please use the raise hand function and we will get to as many questions as we can. Again, the transcript and video of today's press conferences will be posted on collegepressbox.com. DJ, thanks for joining us. We'll go ahead and get started with a question from Patrick Murphy. Patrick? 
Hey, DJ, um, when you look at the, the interior of this Ohio State offensive line, center knows, or centers and, and the guards, what do you see out of that group, and, and what is the challenge that, that they provide? Um, they're athletic. They're physical. Um, they do a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage, um, knocking you out of your gap. Um, and as a whole, they often do a good job of executing when the offensive line do their job. All right, we'll go to uh, Christopher Heidel. Christopher? Hi, DJ. Thanks for taking uh, my question this morning. Uh, just talk about, uh, you know, everybody's been talking about Justin Fields and all that stuff and the running back. So what do you see that's different with Ohio State that people are not talking about? Are they talking about more about the wide receivers? Are they talking about more about, you know, what do you see in your craft for this team? Um, I think the whole offense needs to get some credit um, from the offensive line, from Justin Fields, the running back, the receivers, the tight ends. They uh, The tight ends played well in the last couple of games. So I feel like the offense as a whole is just a challenge to um, take on. So I feel like the whole offense needs to get credit for what they've been doing. All right, we'll now take a question from Stephen Smith. Go ahead, Stephen. DJ, Christian Barmore has always been a kind of a big time player, but in the last few games, he's really been just incredibly disruptive. Like, what does he bring, not just in practice, but on that game field where on the game field where he's able to flip on that switch and just attack quarterbacks the way he does? Um, it's not really a switch. That's just him. Whether it's in practice or in the game, that's just him. Um, the thing that separates him is just his mindset and just his will and that he the only thing that can stop him is him. It's just his mindset and like how he carries himself, that's just him. It's not really a switch. That's even outside of here, he just feels like he can't be beating anything, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. That's just him. Our next question uh, will come from Brendan Gulick. Go ahead, Brendan. Go ahead, Sorry, I think I just uh, took me a second to get unmuted there. I apologize. DJ, I'm, I'm curious if you could elaborate maybe on how um, your ability to, to practice good on good, you know, the, the, the fact that you guys are going up against your own teammates who you feel are some of the best players in the country prepares you and, and maybe excites you for a matchup where, you know, Ohio State feels the same way. They've got elite talent on both sides of the ball. Does that, you know, heighten your your excitement level for a game like this, knowing that, you know, the, the stakes are certainly high because you're playing for a national championship, but you, you truly do get to play against some of the best players in the country? Yeah, I feel like more than anything, it just prepares us from, for any opponent. Obviously, I mean, different teams do, like, do different things, but going against our offense and our offensive line, I feel like we can take on any challenge that any offense gives us. All right, we'll go now go to Steve Moulton. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, DJ. Uh, I was hoping you could speak about uh, the uh, overall front seven and at least uh, the, the growth that you've seen out of the front seven and over collect, overall collectively. How do you think you guys have improved throughout the season? Um, from starters, I feel like we've done a better job of stopping the run, um, and I think the biggest thing was just communicating. Um, it's been a very long season, and um, over time we've done a good job of just, you know, gaining chemistry together, and you kind of get a feel for, you know what I'm saying, everybody around you. You know what I'm saying? You're starting to figure out how everybody play and how you have to communicate with different players, you know what I'm saying, a certain way and give them calls a certain way. So just the chemistry and just the bond that we've created and grown to over the whole season is just what been the biggest difference. All right, our next question will come from Angel Wells. Go ahead, Angel. Hi, so before college, what made you want to start playing the game of football? And did you play any other sports as a kid too? Um, I started playing football when I was four years old. And um, before football, I started playing baseball when I was three and I played basketball. but. Football has just been something that's always been around me, like growing up, like from my older brothers, my uncles. Um, I don't even remember like me, like actually wanting to play football, just from, as far as I can remember, that's something that's always done. But um, it wasn't, baseball was my first sport and probably my favorite sport, but 
football has always been there. We have time for uh, another quick one. If someone has a question, uh, raise your hand, and we'll get uh, one or two more in here. All right, we'll go to Leo Johnson. Leo, go ahead. Hey, DJ, I was asking Phil Mathis about this before you came. How do you plan to get past the Buckeyes' outstanding offensive line and stop their great rushing attack and passing attack? Um, I just believe in all the calls the coach is going to put us in and um, just executing them. And if you execute the calls, then it's going to put you in the best position to make plays. Um, yeah, I don't really, I'm not really focused on like just me personally, but just executing all the calls that he gives us and it'll put us in the best position to make plays. And our final question will come from Alif Karim. Alif? Hey, man. Um, thanks for taking this question. Uh, you know, with the Saturday game for Washington football and Tampa Bay, there's a lot of players on Washington on the defensive side of the ball. Kind of what does that speak to the preparation you get at Alabama on that side of the ball? And can you repeat that? Yeah, sorry about that. In this Saturday's Washington football game, there's a lot of players in Washington that are on the defensive side of the ball that are from Alabama. So kind of what can you speak to the preparation you get while you're with the Crimson Tide? Oh, just to buy in and, I mean, you see where it can get you. I miss a lot of guys on the Washington football team came from Alabama and even on the defensive line. So just buy in and um, do what the coach, coach asks you to do and um, you can see where it gets you. All right, thank you very much, DJ. Good luck on Monday. Next, we will be joined by linebacker Christian Harris. Again, the hands have been lowered. If you have a question for Christian, please use the raise hand function in your program. Again, video and transcripts will be posted after today on collegepressbox.com. Christian, uh, thanks for joining us. We'll go ahead and uh, start with a question uh, from Dan Hope. Dan, go ahead. Hey, Christian, when you're going up against an offense like this that's had as much success as it's had both in the past and the run game, kind of how do you handle that in terms of making sure you're equally prepared for both areas? Uh, just making sure, you know, uh, like you said, they're very explosive in the passing game, they're very explosive in their run game, and uh, just being very uh, disciplined, you know, just executing whatever coach's game plan is. And, uh, you know, I just think being disciplined is a very big part of that. Next question comes from Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Christian, uh, Dylan recently opened up about some of the difficulties uh, of this season for him. Just what's it been like in that room with him, and, and what have you been able to do to help him along? I mean, I think Dylan's done a really great job throughout, like, all his injuries and stuff that he's been dealing with. But, um, you know, sometimes, you know, I think I'd probably just communicate a little more or, you know, we'll switch out spots on the field sometimes, stuff like that. It's not really too much that's changed, but, uh, you know, he's still a great leader for us uh, each and every day, no matter what he's going through. So I think he's done a pretty great job. Next question comes from Haley Sutton. Go ahead, Haley. Hey, Christian. Obviously, you know, this year has not been what anyone expected with COVID popping in and out, um, but your team has still managed to break a new record, it seems, every week. And now you're looking forward to playing to the national championship on Monday. So I guess my question is, would a national championship win to cap off everything y'all have accomplished this year maybe be a little bit more special than a regular year? Or how will winning on Monday kind of be a bigger accomplishment? Uh, I mean, I just think, you know, getting an opportunity to play in the national championship, regardless of, you know, whatever year it is, whatever you had to go through that year, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. And I think, uh, you know, just you should go out there and try and take advantage of it. I mean, we'll see. We'll just, I can't really answer for really that. I'm not like I say, is we'll just see what happens on Monday. All right. Our next question comes from Tony Gerdeman. Uh, Tony, go ahead, please. Just wondering about the Ohio State running game. You mentioned you have to be disciplined. What have you seen so far that uh, leads you to think, or why have they been so successful successful this year based on what you have seen on the ground? I think it starts with them up, uh, up front. Their O-line is really physical. 
you know, they do a really good job of just like I said, executing whatever their coach's game plan is, uh, especially getting to the second level. And the, other co the running back, you know, he does a really great job of uh, hitting the seams and uh, cutbacks. And I mean, he does a really great, he has a really great stiff arm. I mean, he's just an all around great running back. So uh, you just have to make sure you're really sound in your gap control and uh, real physical. Next question comes from Zachary Brazilier. Zachary, go ahead. What, what is, you know, Dylan meant to this defense and to the younger guys? I mean, he's obviously been through a lot. The fact that he's playing through, you know, hurt and playing through, you know, bumps and bruises. What, what has he meant to you guys? All right, can you repeat that? What has Dylan meant to you guys? You know, the leadership he's brought. You know, he's obviously been a difficult year for him. I mean, what, what's he been like as a leader? Oh, he's a great leader for us. Uh, somebody I've always looked up to since I was little. Uh, you know, Dylan's like a big brother to me. And, uh, you know, he's very vocal out there. And, uh, you know, he, he also leads by example. Um, but, you know, he's a very great leader. You know, we all look up to him on the defense. You know, whenever the energy slowly picks us up. Uh, whether that's him saying something or leading by example by making a big play in practice or in the game, stuff like that. So I think he's doing a really great job. Our next question comes from AP Stedham. Uh, AP, go ahead. Hey, good morning, Christian. Morning. Uh, say, Christian, I was wondering if you can tell me about number 88 uh, for Ohio State. He has 12 catches, but five are for touchdowns. Jeremy Rucker, what have you seen from him that makes him so uh, explosive? Uh, I think all around he's a great player. Uh, he's really physical, which also like causes a lot of challenges because, you know, a lot of tight ends, they may be only physical and not really that effective in the pass or only effective in the pass and not that effective in the run. But I think he can do all both of those. Uh, which makes you, you know, like I said, sound, sound really have to be really disciplined because he can kill you in any any moment of the game. Well, like I said, whether it's the run play, he'll put you on your back, or a pass because I mean he's a great route runner. And he's also got some size on him, so you know it's really hard to get it get around him when he's trying to make catches. So his catch radius is also well. So um, I think he'll present a really good challenge for us, and he's a really great player. Our next question comes from Alif Kareem. Alif. Hey, Christian, thanks for taking this time. Um, with this Saturday's Washington football game, there's a lot of players on Washington that are on the defensive side of the ball. Sort of what does it speak to uh, the way you guys prepare at Alabama to be NFL ready by the time you guys are done with your playing careers? Well, I think, you know, the coaches here at Alabama do a really great job of developing players uh, to, you know, give them the best chance to, you know, play in the, on the next level. And also be successful, not just get there, but to be able to get there and stay there and be consistent. So uh, I think that just, you know, just seeing those people, you know, on the Washington football team uh, get, out, get out there and play just, you know, shows what, how great our coach is and how great this program is here at Alabama. All right, we'll now go to Jeff Spiegel. Jeff? Hi, Christian. Uh, certainly, you know, this offense has gotten, you know, more than its share of publicity and deservedly so. And the defense has had, you know, a few more growing pains. Uh, is this a great chance for you guys to, you know, to make a statement against a high powered offense like this to say, hey, you know, we, we play pretty well on this side of the ball, too? Uh, I think, you know, each and every week we try to go in making a statement. Uh, we know we have a really great offense. You know, we have times where we are a little bit shaky on defense, but. You know, uh, you're only as good as your last game. So we try to, you know, bounce back and, like I said, just execute whatever coach's game plan is and do whatever we can to win. We'll now go to Leo Johnson. Leo, go ahead. Hey, Christian. What have both you and your team faced this season to help you prepare for this Ohio State offense? Wait, you said what have we faced? Yeah. Uh, I think... You know, just great running backs or great tight ends. I mean, different pieces from other offenses. I mean, you kind of look at their offense there. They have, they can literally do anything. They can run the ball at any point. They can throw it at any point. They have really great explosive receivers. They have a really explosive quarterback who can sit in the pocket, take a hit and throw it. He can run out of the pocket and scramble and throw it, or he can take off for 50 yards. So, uh, I mean, like I said, they have, they present a really, really great challenge for our defense. And I'm, uh, I think we're excited for the challenge. Next question come from Steve Moulton. Go ahead, Steve. 
Hey, Christian, hope you're doing well today. Uh, so I, I hear Coach Saban a lot talking about affecting our affecting the pocket in particular uh, on the defensive side. How, big, how much bigger of a challenge is affecting the pocket with a guy like Justin Fields who has that scrambling ability? Well, I think you just have to be, you know, disciplined, you know, not rushing too far off the field past the quarterback, you know, giving him a chance to step up in the pocket and get out uh, to extend the play because, you know, that happens a lot whenever you're facing a quarterback who has the ability to scramble. So uh, I think just staying disciplined with that and just trying to close the pocket is uh, very important. Hey, we'll take one final question from Angel Wells. Go ahead, Angel. Hey, Christian. What do you do to calm your nerves while you compete in big games like this one? Uh, I mean, I think it all starts from before the game. I have like this little ritual where I eat like Skittles and stuff. So that kind of like when I keep my little ritual the same, uh, it kind of keeps me calm. And uh, like I said, I just have a lot of confidence in my team as well. Uh, whenever we go out there that we can, you know, go out there and execute each and every play. So I think uh, it all stems from the confidence that I have in my team and everybody around me. I think Christian, thank you for your time. Good luck on Monday. And our final Alabama student athlete today will be a safety Jordan Battle. Again, if you have a question, use the raise hand function and we'll spend some time uh, with Jordan in just a few moments. Welcome, Jordan. Uh, we'll go ahead and take our first question from David Ferronis. David? Hey, Jordan, good to see you. Uh, good to see you uh, doing so well since uh, your time at Aquinas. Uh, Want to know, um, you know, just what it's going to feel like for you playing back home in South Florida and then also just how South Florida prepared you and the other guys from this area for uh, for big moments like this. Uh, of course, it's going to be a great time, you know, playing in Miami, my hometown, well, close to my hometown, uh, having a lot of family there, you know, um, Getting a, getting a chance to play in Miami, you know, in the Hard Rock Stadium, you know, grew up watching the Dolphins in there. And um, how, so, how South Florida, you know, prepared us for this, you know, uh, you know, we grew up with speed, you know, track, uh, basketball, playing every sport, you know. We come out, we, we, we run, just run straight out, the, straight out our mom, you know, we run, you know, that's what, that's what we do. So, you know, that's how South Florida, you know, prepared us for moments like these. All right, our next question comes from Jordan McPherson. Jordan, go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. It was muted for a second. Uh, hey there, Jordan. Uh, can you speak to just the entire, basically your guys' entire secondary is South Florida guys. You, Pat, Daniel, Josh, just what's it like playing with a bunch of guys at the college level going for a national title and doing it with guys who you basically grew up with on the high school circuit? Yeah, you know, it's fun. Um, you know, coming from South Florida, you know, we all kind of have the same lingo, you know. Uh, we got, we just, we just create, we have a, a, such a great bond, you know, coming from out of the same area. You know, I grew up playing with, with players like uh, D. Wright, uh, playing against Pat, playing against Josh Joe. You know, it's just, it's just very fun, you know, to be able to be playing against and competing for a, a national championship now, coming from the same area. All right, our next question will come from Nathan Baird. Go ahead, Nathan. Ohio State, as you saw on film um, in the Clemson game, used checkdowns pretty well uh, between Fields and Sermon. I'm just curious, as, as a defense, how do you try to prevent some of those gash plays from happening? Just because it's obviously not their their first choice of a play, but it can still be really effective. Well, I mean, just having having good eyes, you know, locking on to your to your man or or locking on to your to your zone, you know, in, in a scramble or when it's when it's long. When it's long time, when he has long time to throw the ball, you know, it's just being consistent and being focused on, you know, your your keys, and you know, um, watching your man you lock on. If he, if he scrambles, you know, you got to stay on, you know, because creating creating plays off the scramble is one of the um, one of the most explosive plays, you know, for a quarterback to make. Next question will come from Stephen Means. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey Jordan, um, you spent a a small period of time coming into Ohio State before obviously you chose Alabama. I don't know. Is it weird at all to think that no matter what, you could be playing in this game right now? You know, it's funny. Um, my, my mom, dad, and my brother, we were all talking about it in our uh, group chat this uh, past week, you know, and, and it's kind of funny that I'll, in either school I would have went to, I would have been 
in the um, national championship. But I give all praise to Ohio State, uh, great coaching staff, uh, great players. And um, I, just, I just had to make the best decision for me towards the end to come to Alabama. So I, I give all the, all the praise and all the you know, excitement and enjoying Ohio State as well. Next question comes from Ben Hall. Ben, go ahead with your question. Hey, Jordan. Um, you know, throughout your career uh, at Ohio State, you know, your freshman year, most importantly, you played along some really talented safeties who had some experience playing in the college football and Xavier McKinney and Shaheem Carter and them guys like that. Uh, what did you learn from those guys um, to kind of help push you in these moments and games like this? Uh, to be consistent, you know, stay focused. <clears throat> Stay focused on, on what we on what we have to do to you know you know win this game you know um, go watch film you know be be locked in be a leader on the field you know get everybody on the same page you know have us have us all communicate be on the same page you know coach uh, coach Scott tell us you know every before every game you know win the game before the game even happens you know and that means like stand in the books know what's coming you know and just be focused. Next question will come from Dan Hope. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Jordan, just to follow up on what you were asked about, you know, your decision to flip from Ohio State to Alabama, just what do you remember about, you know, being recruited by the Buckeyes and what did you like about them and what did you ultimately make you decide to become Alabama instead? You know, like I said before, um, it was it was a, it was a personal thing, you know, I had to I had to make the best decision for me. And um, obviously, you see, I did make the best decision for me and um that's all that came down to. I don't remember the process and all that. You know, it's been too much in college for me to even remember that. Next question comes from Myron Williams. Myron. Hello, Jordan. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, you will be returning to South Florida. And with, along with a couple other guys on the squad, have you guys had a chance to talk to each other by some of the expectations? And furthermore, has Coach Saban or Coach Golding actually talked to you guys as well to try to get you tempered down? I know you got a lot of expectations going on with family and friends. Oh, uh, no, nah, we haven't really talked about that yet. Um, that's probably going to be something to talk about after the, to, after the game. You know, um, right now we're just focusing on, you know, preparing for the game, you know, and hoping for the best outcome for us, you feel me? All right, our next question comes from Patrick Murphy. Patrick? Jordan, as a safety, just looking, you know, across the Ohio State passing attack and, and the weapons they have, um, what, what do you see in those guys and what is the biggest challenge you guys face out of those weapons? Um, obviously, you know, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, Lave, and um, number six, Jamison Williams, they, you know, they're all great, great players, uh, very respectful, very respectful players. Um, they're very great, very fast, um, very, you know, very, um, I don't know. Huh? Good. Hey, they're going to be the greatest times we have, you know, this national championship. All right, our next question will go to Anthony Euro. Anthony? Hey, Jordan, have you spoken to your former high school coach, uh, Roger Harriet, about the national title game? And how has he impacted you throughout your high school and college career? Oh, I love Coach Harriet. Um, you know, very family, family, family man. Um, he he, he, he uh, coached my brother at university school before I even went to St. Thomas, before he even left university school and went to St. Thomas. And that's what made me, you know, go to St. Thomas. You know, he taught me a lot, man. Um, just being disciplined, you know, being a, having great character, you know, that's, that's what led me to, you know, getting here right now, where I am right now. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. We'll go to Jeff Spiegel. Jeff. Hi, Jordan. Uh, tonight, um, Pat's going to be up for a couple of awards, including, I guess, uh, what would be the equivalent of the uh, the Heisman Trophy for the defensive guys. Uh, just talk about how that, what that's going to be like, how much you're rooting for him, and and what an impact he's had on on your career at Bama. Oh, Pat! Pat is a great player. Um, you know, he always he always on me about you know staying focused, keeping the keeping the track. You know, and I'm very I'm very happy for him for you know being up for these awards. And I'm very excited to see the outcome of these. All right, we'll take a question from Joe Goodman. Joseph? Hey, Jordan. 
you might not realize this, but when Nick Saban back in the day came to Alabama, George Smith at St. Thomas Aquinas uh, wrote a letter telling no one to go to Alabama back then. It's been so long since Saban has been at Alabama now. How do young players like yourself who came up going to St. Thomas and other schools kind of look at, at Nick Saban now compared to the way they did when he left the Dolphins? I don't, I don't know nothing about that. You just kind of like blew my mind. I ain't even know nothing about that. Uh, I mean, my decision was like based on all on me, uh, my family. You know, and, and the coaching staff of at Alabama. So, you know, I don't really know about any of that uh, George Smith stuff, but I love George Smith. It's my guy right there. All right, we'll take one final question from Stephen Smith. Stephen. Jordan, I know he didn't play against Notre Dame, but how has Malachi Moore looked in practice this week? Um, that's not, that's not for me to, uh, speak on, you know, um, Malachi, you know, focusing on getting his back right and all that. So we just focusing on, on, on us and, you know, moving forward from the next game, what we could do better and what we can, you know, do to uh, change what we did bad in, in a Notre Dame game. All right, Jordan, thank you for joining us. Uh, best of luck on Monday. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. A reminder that transcripts and a copy of the video will be on collegepressbox.com shortly.